Here we are in uh, Faversham Market. I do believe that's Shepherd Neem over there, so we shall find out. Um, there are a lot of other brewers calling themselves that, but actually it's all to do with continuing brewing. Right. Uh, and brewing has not stopped on this site since that date. It may have been doing it earlier, but we don't know that. Uh, but certainly somebody here has been brewing all that time. Uh, we've well, got a few illustrations of early brewing, not our brewery, I'm afraid, but, um, but, but exactly how it would have been done. Paddles for the mash, um, and, and pretty much everything being done either by hand, uh, with a little help from you know, coal-fired uh, steam and things like that. We were, the, um, we were one of the first, if not the first, brewery to get a steam engine outside of London. It's not in the house now, it's somebody's office, we can still set a fire, we can kill the bear. But, uh, uh, mind your head, <laughs> mind your head down into the malt kiln. <laughs> this is Colin in front of me, by the way. Yes, I heard that. This just reminds this me, is it. this is underground, yeah? yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. This yeah, would be a good chance of test. No, no, it's pretty, pretty Wow, it's pretty We're cool. We're about to do a refurb drop in here, because it does, you know, it keeps peeling off and not looking its best. So we will be doing some work on this next year. Um, this, this is a kill. This is a kill, this is the malt kill. Um, and all you would have done is an inverted oven, if you like. So, so you've got the small bit here, where you put the, the heat under the malt. You've soaked your, um, your barley. Uh, you know, cooking to pale ale, malt, uh, crystal, chocolate, whatever it is you're trying to achieve, brown chocolate, whatever you're trying to achieve. Um, so you've had a couple of guys stoking the fire, well, probably one down here and mm. two upstairs turning the malt. Um, and, uh, you know, I won't go through the brewing process with you guys. Yeah. Yeah. I just love how uh, untouched it is, it's yeah. just amazing. Um, there were about 20 malt houses in Faversham um, in, uh, in the late 18th, early 19th century. Um, there aren't any now, yeah. unfortunately. A lot of the buildings survive, but then no yeah. active, active uh, maltings. Uh, we buy um, our malt as a combination. We buy what we can from Kent, but unfortunately Kent doesn't produce enough malt for us. And um, uh, so we buy the rest from East Anglia, but they all go through a malt merchant anyway, because obviously we want them, uh, a barley merchant, because we want them to malt it for us. Um, but we've got quite a lot of surviving tools. We've got malt rakes. Yeah, I just noticed that. As well. um, oh, that's superb. There's a, there's, a, there's a heck of a lot of stuff. Some of it's ours, quite a lot, most of it's ours actually. We bought a few bits and pieces when we redid our visitor centre because there were things missing from the process that we wanted to show off. But a lot of it was ours. Yeah. Yeah, like a, we've got a Cooper's workshop we'll see in a bit. Um, and then if you've ever done any brewing or seen any brewing, this stuff will be saccharometers and the like. Yeah, yeah. We still use these in the main brew house, sac saccharometers. We have a digital way of doing it. Oh, right. But we still do it by hand as well. You know, yeah. Just to make sure. Um, and, the, and in the microbrewery, we only use this because we don't have the digital kit. Yeah. We have plenty of saccharometer kits, so we do it by hand. So if you look at our Green Hop Ale film from last year on YouTube, yeah. you'll see Stuart doing it all by hand. Yeah. And even in the main brewery house, to be fair, so we pretty much do it all by hand. Um, if, you, uh, if you came back in the time machine, you would um, uh, you could brew here. There's no two ways about it. If you came up from the 19th century to this Yeah, because this is basically what they have. The yeah. only thing you see that's different is the um, thermometer. We've got a digital thermometer. Yeah. And we've got a sparging arm, an alternated sparging arm. Yeah. But, you know, it's only a, it's only a switch, so we can teach them that pretty quickly and make a brew here very easily. Brilliant. Yeah. Superb. So, uh, hasn't changed too much. The log is, is different. Um, oh, it's coming out. Yeah, Remember that, Colin, no giving away secrets. Right, 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 <laughs> Right, here we go, into the steam engine room. Right, steam engine. These aren't our original engines, yeah, mate. They're not the original engines. Um, yeah. Because the original one was so, you know, so long ago. So yeah. 1780, 1790? 80, 1780. But, um, <coughs> yeah. But what I want you to see here is this is what I mean about, yeah, this is what I mean about this one particularly. These are, you know, this is not a Victoria B. Um, this is uh, much, much older. Yeah. It's just that there's all these facades. The whole building is clad with facades. Yeah. Now, okay, they're Georgian, Victorian. They are actually period facades, but they're not anywhere close to expressing quite how old the brewery is. Uh, and that's what these, uh, you know, some of these. A lot of people take their old ship beams. Bollocks. They're not at all. Uh, <laughs> they are old building beams. Yeah. yeah, they're building beams, and they may have been reused uh, elsewhere in the buildings. Just because we're on a creek doesn't mean everything came from a ship. And, mm. it, there, were, and then there were ship builders here, and there still are. It's rather lovely. There's still lots of ship builders. But 
They weren't building ships that took these kind of beams, that's yeah. just not true. They're old building beams, we, we, there's a lot of recycling in brewing. There still is, which is great. Yeah. If the brewery closes down, it's sad news, but what's great is that kit will live on at somebody else's yeah. brewery. You know, it's happened there a couple of times in Scotland as well, yeah. yeah micro the second they, they can date a lot as well by the nails. Well, yeah, they date a lot by the nails. Um, we've, had, we've done a lot of carbon dating, which is a surprisingly cheap thing to do. Well, two years ago, three years ago, um, we found um, a waste pipe. That doesn't sound like glamorous, and it's not, mm. but it was a waste pipe um, carved from a single um, uh, tree trunk. Wow. Uh, which was pretty cool. And we, we sent it off for carbon dating. I mean, it, it, um, actually, I don't know the results of that, but um, uh, I don't think I've got time to the results of that. I need to check their archives. Um, but it, it, was, it was pretty, I mean, we were convinced it was sort of medieval. There was no two Was about. that found on this site here, was yeah, it? Yeah, it was set up. Yeah. We'll go down there by the gates. Oh, back. wow, yeah. We were doing some work on our own drainage. Yeah. I mean, this other thing, we didn't know what the hell it was. Yeah. It like, someone said it looks like a tree room. There's not many trees here. It was a massive room if it was. Yeah. Because it was a whole trunk. Wow. Um, carved out to be a you know a gully uh, uh, sort of latrine mm. sort of um, uh, wastage yeah for the for the brewery. It's amazing. So uh, that is what you call a sun and planet. I'm not a big steam steam geek, I'm afraid, but uh, <laughs> I do know that's a sun planet because of these little things that will turn like that. Yeah. In fact, we did a sun planet beer once. Um, uh, I bought uh, one one of the Sigma competitions. So it might be the Century's one actually. Oh, okay. Uh, um, we've got a bit of steam power as well, so we were early to steam. Uh, this was the machine we actually did use at this brewery. This drove the brewery okay. for a long time. Um, we, we used them up till the 20th century, like 50s, I think we stopped, 60s, we stopped using them. Mm. So, yeah. uh, there we go, first, first one was 1780 from Bolton. Ah, till the 60s. Yeah. Where's Eric? Right, here's a typical beer story. This is our mill, and it's about 150, 160 years old. Wow. And we it bought it second hand. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. About 110, 120 years ago. Uh, still goes. Uh, this section obviously is more modern. Uh, yeah. Post war, I think it was. Um, even so, it's not exactly a new bit of kit. No. But it works. We get a guy in, service it every year. <laughs> Made by. Um, Thickers, tank, you know, armament people. Yeah. So it's built like a tank, still oh, goes. Super. Yeah. And it's all driven by firewheels, which you can go around there to the left if you want to have a little nose. Um, so yeah, we make our bristle in this. Uh, our barley comes in, we, we build it ourselves. I think most breweries. Oh uh, yeah, cool. It's in the micro, we uh, think we have to get pre, pre milled in the micro. It's amazing to see someone survive. Yeah, it's amazing what survives. Yeah, yeah, it's fantastic. Uh, yeah. I think I'll go there as well, I'll show you the okay. sort of hot stuff you sit there. <laughs> we winch it all up into, the, into here. Um, all our hops, Sydney Hops, one of the providers, Charles Farrow, another provider. Um, Fuggles, what have we got here? Cascade, that's U uh, USA Cascade. Yeah. Uh, Simcoe. You use Simcoe, do you? Yeah, use oh, Simcoe. Right. Don't know what beer it is. Um, Simcoe. Might be a contract. Might be. Yeah. This is pretty cool. Look at this. Look at this, without cheating. Uh, I don't know. What does it look like? Chicory? Bloody twigs. It looks, it looks yeah. like cinnamon or something like that. Licorice. Is it? Oh, the porters. Yeah. Oh yeah, of course. Cool. And I've <laughs> seen it before with some of our licorice, um, with some of our porters. Yeah. I came up once in the box, I'm not joking, like that long. Yeah. Long thin box, looked like a What's in that? It looks like it's going to have umbrellas in it or something. Because uh, we get a lot of brollies for the pubs, you know. Big, big long box. Um, open up, just a massive thick twig. Mm. And that was a uh, from Fort Worth Mason, God knows wow. what. Wow. But um, in, in one of the beers, yeah, in one of the porters that we did. Um, so that's quite fun. They're, uh, uh, yeah, it's got, it's, I think it's nice to play with ingredients like that. Yeah. I think there is a line to be drawn when it comes to. Oh, I'm doing a chocolate beer, so I chucked a load of bitter dark chocolate into it. Oh yeah, of course, yeah. Did you not think of using chocolate more? Yeah. I'm doing a beer like this, so I chuck a load of grapefruit into it. Mm. Cascade hops. Some chocolate more, some organic crystal. And these are the batch numbers. We want to trace everything we do. Everything we do is traced. If we make a beer, you have that bottle of beer, something's wrong with it, give us a call, give us the batch number on the bottle, that'll be on the neck, yeah. and we'll be able to tell you, right, it was brewed on this date by this brewer, that was the sack of malt that was used there, that delivery of malt, that delivery of a bit of lime going into something there, Cascade, Admiral, Amarillo, 
That's my, uh, one of my favourite ops, Amarillo. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. It's a good op. We're using yeah. that one of the new beers. Really? Mm. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, you know, every single thing. Here we are. Right, this is the big stuff. Yeah. This is, this is the thing that is totally unique. No one else is brewing in wood. Uh, there will be plenty of wood clad, clad uh, tons, mm. but this is solid wood wow. and totally, as you can see, un uncoated on the inside as well. Um, so still bring direct into the wood. Natural like that. Well, it's interesting. I mean, there's a debate. To be it's only in there what three or four hours, but we wouldn't have it any other way. So these, how old are, how old are these tons? These are uh, pre First World War, right. 1913, 1914. Um, they were reconditioned about 50 years ago. In fact, yeah. due for another birthday soon, actually. Um, but they're, yeah, they're a pretty good nick. I mean, they suffer yeah, from a bit, a bit of steam. This stuff's not old. This is ply that we replace on a regular basis. It's this that's the old bit. Have you stuck your head in there, Cole, and had a sniff? I have. Yeah. Nice and warm as well. Oh, it is. Yeah, very warm. Remember, back in the day, two full salts had to get in this. Sorry, I'm yeah. No, I'll say that all the time on my channel, you're alright. Yeah, my boss might not be alright. Alright, okay, I'll cut that out. <laughs> so remember, two blokes were in this unit of the day as probably a total of about 2 tons of mud in there. They're here at the end of the day, shoveling out by hand, uh, as quick as they can, let's get another brew, get another brew on. And they're shoveling above, you know, shoulder head height, really, because this is lower than we are. Um, that kept them fit, and at that temperature as well, the heat, yeah. the residual heat in there, you can in there, you know, the tropics, hotter than that, in there. Um, you put your arm right in there now, you feel that heat. Working, really working hard with that heavy, heavy, wet malt, shoveling it out, really tough. Oh, wow. Brewers are, you know, traditionally, you know, the beer belly is from the beer as a mix. It's the crisps and the Cornish pasty I'm having with my yeah. the problem. Um, <laughs> But, but, but brewers, you know, they might be having a couple of pints, but they are certainly working for their, working yeah. for their beer. I think this is weird. Right, so, here. sorry, in regards no, to this... No, not here. Oh. Sorry, Carl. So, in regards to this ton, this is the only ton you've ever brewed, you ever brewed Spitfire in? Every beer, every ale uh, yeah. from this brewery is, has only ever been brewed in here. So we've never, although we contract brew for some people, yeah. um, uh, we've never actually contacted any of our beers out. So every pint of Spitfire, every pint yeah. of Bishop's, all the others, have all come from here. Be an interesting point to see whether that adds to our house style. It's difficult mm. to tell. It's a few hours in the wood versus you know eight years plus for us. Yeah. But you know it's a good but, few hours. Yeah. But like you say it's almost like it's barrel aging without aging it. So, so oh, yeah. like you say, it could take on the context of the wood in the flavour. Like you well, said. I hope there's some characteristics there. Yeah. The show. You know, it's 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 an ideal wood for that. Do you ever thought of like brewing one in the stainless steel as well? I'd be really interested to try Spitfire. <laughs> we could do it in the micro, say. We brew Spitfire yeah. exactly the same spec. It'd be really interesting, steel. yeah. Who knows? Who knows? But yeah, this could be the secret to your Such signature taste. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. But how's this? Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. This Jim's great great grandfather was, was Jim. Right. Um, uh, but yeah, we won't totally into this out. We, we have a cleaning regime every Friday where we absolutely blitz the place. Uh, but between each one, you know, we don't do. We get straight on the brain because it's only been there a couple of hours. The Sam Adams is an interesting case in point because we do something called Krausen. Uh, and what that is is you take, um, I think it's a third from memory, 25%, maybe a third of the last brew, and start back again and use it in the next in the, mm. in, in the next brew. Um, like you would a yeast cake. You know, if you give your when you're uh, sort of 10 years old, you know, Blue Peter encouraging you to do a yeast cake, you take half a yeast cake and you give it to the friend and they grow it up and you keep growing your one. Yeah. Uh, or sourdough bread where you can, you know, it's that real artisanal way of working. You take the sourdough, you take a bit out every day and bin it or give it to a friend to use as their starter and then you refeed your own. Um, so there's that constant bit of live activity in the bin. That is superb. Yeah, uh, no, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We used to make yogurt at home all the time. It was a bit of an 80s craze, wasn't it? Bit, you keep the yogurt. Oh, yeah, all on that side as well. Right, so ale on this side, lager on, on this side. side. Lager on that side. Mash conversion better on an outer ton. Stainless steel. Yeah, stainless steel. Powered by a computer, you know, not the yeah. for the ales. Yeah. 
Yeah. It's amazing just to see how, I mean, even though it's lager, it's still brewed in the traditional way. It's not sort of like a faceless sort of... No, no, there's still a yeah, guy, there's yeah. still a guy there brewing it, yeah. checking the, checking it's the uh, uh, gravity. Um, Brilliant. Right, what we'll do is we'll swap with these guys, we'll just see a few more ingredients and then we'll go over and see them. Okay. Um, I just think it's really, I love this book because it's, um, it's so, when you first work in beer, you bore the arse of your other, of your other half by coming home and telling what him or her you? what you've been doing and what you've discovered today about beer. Yeah. I've been here seven years and I still don't know bugger all because there's so <laughs> much to learn about beer. Um, I'm getting there with the language and we've got a glossary in the brewery of all the different words you can get. Um, it is fascinating. It really is. Yeah, I use a couple of these words, not this many though. <laughs> we put these stained glass windows in in the year 2000. That was part of a millennium project. We needed to get these, these um, we used to brew the largest in the mash tons. We needed to get these new vessels in there. I say new, it's brewing. We bought the second hand from a brewery. Heavy brewing. Exactly. So what we did was we took down that whole wall uh, and then we put it back up. We decided to do a bit of a project and add in these um, stained glass. And they told the story of Shepherdine and Hops. So on the left we've got the hot story. We've got Stuart Walker who would be in charge of, um, uh, of stringing the hops and, and the wire work. Uh, the hop processing up in the top middle, the hop, um, hop pickers yeah. cuts on the right there. Uh, obviously the barley as well on the left. Um, hot pockets being filled, hot bins being filled. Uh, you've got the tally man who would pay you for your hot picking. You get a wooden peg every bin you filled. At the end of the day you're cashing your wooden pegs for, um, for your pay. You'll be paid slightly in partly in beer when you're working holiday. Queen Court Farm, which was our hot garden, uh, one of our old logos, Shepherd and Mare today, and then how it's done these days, up in the Crow's Nest, um, uh, Cherry Picker, up high, packing them down. It's still mostly done by hand in terms of the bringing them down, for the, bringing them in for the hot garden. Yeah. On the other side, you've got a bit more Shepherd and Mare. Yeah, like the Spitfire and. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Spitfire. You've got a Fisher's Finger, which is a oh, side yeah. post, <laughs> pointing. Um, he used to point pilgrims. That's queer. They would point pilgrims on their journey from Winchester via London to Canterbury. Uh, that's what a vicious finger signpost is. Uh, it puts to bed any of those, you know, slightly ruder, bluer versions yeah. of what it is. Uh, our wooden mash tubs, of course, spinning, uh, the, the barges we spoke about, the other in there, Bob Pound. Charlie, our last dray horse, who was in 1968. Uh, and the steam back power dray yeah. as well. Amazing, I love it. It's just, I just love how you know, I mean, it feels like a small brewery, even though it's massive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. We, we produced um, 71 and a half million pints last year, so it's a lot of beer. <laughs> but, you know, it's more than you can drink, isn't it? Nice. Yeah. <laughs> uh, these are our two coppers. Right. Uh, like everyone these days, well, not everyone, but like a lot of people, they're stainless steel these days, you know. It is more efficient, it is, you know, uh, extremely fit to have copper coppers. It's not actually necessary to improve the quality of the beer. Yeah. It's not really necessary to have a copper copper. Um, but, uh, yeah, we've got two of these. The one innovation we do here with our boiling is um, we don't use a heating element. There are two breweries in the world, we're one of them, we were the first one, um, to get rid of traditional heating elements like, you know, they're called kettles because they weren't like your, your kitchen kettle. We took the elements out. What we do is we inject steam into it um, uh, for a few reasons. Um, the actual technology comes from the power boat industry. Um, they're used to inject uh, air. They want the oxygen in that air um, into the engines. Um, we use it to inject steam because it dissipates better. You've got a big vessel with a heating element. That heating element will be hotter near there than it will furthest away. Yeah. Steam will dissipate better. You'll have less charring, therefore you won't need to make colour correction. Um, and indeed flavour correction. Mm. You're charring, you're always battling against that charring. It's a waste of time, it's a waste of resource. Um, and we save 47% on energy by having this system in the brew house. Uh, so I think uh, it's just been put in by one of the big international brewers abroad. I think you'll start to see this in a lot more places. It's called PDX. Oh, okay. Um, and I would watch this space. I think people yeah. will start to realise the benefits. I mean, forty-seven percent with energy costs going up like they have in the last yeah, few years. Yeah, definitely. It's, it's yeah. Phenomenal. Brilliant. Yeah. Um, so uh, yeah, so we've brilliant. That in. Superb. Come and have a little pipe. Are you out with capacity on your? Oh, sorry, you're on the height. Yeah? Have you got the capacity? Yeah, I'm quiet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
Sorry if I leave it yourself. I've got the capacity on your bottom. Oh, wow, look at this. Not visible, unfortunately. We love these have you know, a nice little wishing well, but unfortunately, that's not really the way the world works. So uh, we put we put this back up when we got the mineral water certification in 2006. Because everyone often asks, where is your well? Because I yeah. think they imagine lowering a bucket into it or chucking a coin in it. We're glad they're not doing either of those, particularly <laughs> the latter. Uh, unless it's nickel count, it's going to go up dramatically. It's um, but this is, yeah, this is, uh, this is exactly where the well is. It's just behind that, <laughs> two foot behind that wall. That's amazing. Right. That's it, is that real? It's recording. Yep. <laughs> right. In essence, in here, we have a sample of every cask beer we've produced in the last three weeks. Mm. So we take a sample per racking tank, okay. put it in here, broach it the day after it's filled, and then we taste it at that time, one week, two, uh, two weeks, three weeks. Yeah. So we can judge its, its life through the, through the brewery which is infinitely worse conditions than any pub, because of course pubs will drink beer in three days. That's right, yeah. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, this present time, there aren't any wildly interesting beers in here. We're just going through a, a season. Oh no, so, I mean, all I wanted to do was get the, the basics. This finger, Canterbury Jack, Mild is probably in here, um, Kent's Best, but I don't think there's anything else. Oh, the Mild's good. Yep. Yeah, because I'm not that. No, no, it's new. Yeah. First time I've yeah. on cast this um, for a long time. Yeah. Um, As you know, we've also got one that we've run down here because the, the small ones, the pins, are the, the actual beers that ran down yesterday that were racked this morning. Yeah. So we've got Sam Adams Blonde Ambition in there. Oh, oh, now you're lucky. Cast lager, <laughs> basically. <laughs> Actually, I want to get your reaction to that because I've tried that before. Yeah, you do. Yeah. You said you wanted to get my yeah. reaction. So this is my home as a uh, senior brewer. Um, Tough job. And we, we drink in here, or we taste in here every morning at half past eight. We'll also taste everything that goes into package. So mm. a sample of every bright beer tank, and a sample of every bottle of beer, as well as examining the uh, sort of the labeling quality. Yeah. And we taste water, because of course it's fairly key that the, uh, the water that's brewed with tastes well. Yeah. And then the samples on the side are findings trials, which is looking at how the beer settles out. So this is, uh, the ideal optimum finding conditions, as you can see, the, the blonde ambition is, is a little slower to find than some of our own. Yes, yeah, which is down to the, uh, the difference because it's a much lighter beer. It's got yeah. some, some lighter um, malts in it, which which you just don't traditionally find in quite mm. the same way. Brilliant. So, what would you like to start with? Um, I think he wants to get me on the Sam Adams. To see yeah, I want to see your reaction because I've tried the uh, Sam Adams. <laughs> Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah that'd be brilliant. No it's recorded now, anyway. You can take these things off, because they will interfere a bit with the... They're, oh, they're, they're so they're glaring. Look very bright. You're not going to get run over by a forklift in here, <laughs> so you're all right. Yeah, I'll chuck them I don't know, I'm moving about a bit, so... Yeah, there we go. Well, if I can get a forklift in here... Well, exactly. <laughs> they're better men than I am. <laughs> hmm. Definitely. Yeah. If it was slightly sweet, I probably would have said citra, but... Yeah. Oh, this is lovely. Really nice. Is this a, will this one ever be going in bottles or is that only cast? No, it's only cast. We are doing it now for the 4th of July was sort of yeah. the plan when it's going out. And then I think we're casking it again in October for a beer festival. Um, one of the one of the chains has mm. said, can we do it? But and it's called Sam Adams? It's Sam Adams Blonde Ambition. Blonde Ambition. Blonde Ambition. So what do you reckon of it? Come on. Well, I like a sack. The smell of the fruity straight off and the taste of it's there yeah. and it's very palatable to me for considering I don't like lagers yeah. and I can't drink lagers so yeah mm. it's, it tastes more like an owl doesn't it? Than yeah it does yeah. and I think it's because of the hops that you put in it well it's, it's the hops I mean it is you know it is using ale malt mm. it's there's no um, I don't think it's any crystal malt in it at all if I remember right mate so it is strictly an ale oh right it's just, okay, used, yeah. you know, it's just Incredibly light in colour. Yeah, it's gone through our, our cask edit processes. So. Mm. It's beautiful. I really like it. I struggle to identify what people call lager in a cask. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Most times it's okay, good normal. Yeah. Well, when you drop something which is very gassy as a lager, and you get something like this, I understand where you're yeah. coming from. Mm. But drinking from a, a cask which is pressurised and gassy as a lager, fruity. This is nice. But this is the sort of stuff that you can see probably converting mm. lager drinkers easily, yeah. Because mm. it's not too, it's not too aggressive or anything like that, but it's just 
It's got that flavour which you could just session easily without getting bored. It's a lovely flavour. But it does still require the landlord to know what he's doing. Unlike, oh yeah. Unlike a care <laughs> that he can abuse. Yeah, it's just, that's it. Yeah. So but that's going back to having a proper landlord, isn't it? Yeah. And somebody that knows how to deal with beers. Yeah. And mm. that's what we all used to get training for, to be landlord. Um, certainly, we still train all that. Yeah. Yeah, we put them through the, that's like the, the website. website. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. This is lovely, really nice. I must have been that mm. surprised. Taste-wise. <laughs> How long have you been doing this one? This, this, is, it's, this is the first racking of it this year. Right. Uh, we did it for Independence Day last year. Yeah. Um, and I think we did it the year before that with the Sam Adams Brewers. They came over and brewed it with us for Weatherspoon's Beer Festival. Oh, right. Yeah, he was mentioned that, wasn't he? Yeah. But that's two years ago. So uh, last year we went back to them because obviously we've got a fairly good relationship with them uh, yeah. to say, can we repeat it? Um, and then it's now one of our annual seasons. Mm. This is beautiful. I mean, I think once you've got the taste of this, I mean, the, the palate, it's a moorish one. Yeah, because it starts to get sweeter as you drink it, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah, it's really nice. I can nice. just imagine the sort of food if you were eating that as well, that you would want this with yeah. as well. It's really nice. Fish dishes. Right. Right, this is the camera. We'll out there. for David anyway, and carry on finish filming. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Right, so what are you getting on that one? This one actually uses Cascade, doesn't it? It does, yeah. But it's not more not as dominant as... It, no, there's, there's, there's less bitterness to it. Yeah. It's um, more of a, a drinkable beer. Yeah. But it is, again, Cascade as the, the overwhelming mm. aroma. <laughs> and it's a somewhat lower alcohol. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's about... Was it in the bottle? About four point? It's four in the bottle. Yeah, four in the bottle. and a half in cast. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, you're right, you can't taste, well, the bitterness as you put it, and then yeah. it's, a, it's a little bit sweeter to me. It's a bit more sort of quaffable, isn't it? Mm. So now I'm interested in that. <laughs> I've only ever had it in a bottle, so... Mm. Obviously a lot darker. You can smell it as you're drinking it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you can taste it, it's still there. Mm. So, we're drinking that one. Smoother. I could drink a couple of pints for that one. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Strong beer of the shift, 18 to yeah. that. Bishop's finger on cask. This looks stronger again. You're 5%, <laughs> but. Has a bit more of the, uh, the house style in it. Mm. If you like the Adam, this is. Do yeah, like that. Yeah, then this is um, probably our closest rival to that. Yeah, straight away you can tell it's a bit of it gets close to us. Abbott tries to approach us, that's what I mean. Hmm, yeah. You, you know straight away it's Bishop's Finger as soon as you drink it.